two, three, four. When I'm lonely, I drink a fancy beer. Fancy beer. Oh, when I want you only, I drink a fancy beer. Fancy beer. And when the weather's stormy and daybreak is fall, I throw an extra dollar fifty on the bar. There's no sense in saving pennies if I don't know where you are. Oh, I drink a fancy beer. Good evening and welcome to the Beer Show. I'm Steve B and this is my good friend and drinking buddy. Eric T. This week we have a, a good one on tap. We went to do a little road trip, which we're going to share with you and a few clips as we go through the evening. We're going to share some clips with you. Yeah, we went to uh, Lahaina this week. Uh, we were in search of uh, four beers from a local brewery and uh, we decided we wanted to do Kaloha this week. And, um, you know, it was kind of spotty, hit and miss, trying to find them all on the shelf. So we decided let's go to the source and uh, go pick up a, go pick up a couple of beers, and while we we're there, we might have sampled one or two. And that's exactly what we did. We, <laughs> and it's uh, it is it is a tricky one to say. It's Kaholas. Kaholas. Kaholas, yeah. which in Hawaiian means whale tail. Right. And if you look at their label, uh, you will see and notice that uh, there is the there is the the whale tail in the K. Oh, I never noticed that. In the K, but also cool. going across the uh, entire word as well, uh, very sideways. Cool. So I did we'll, see the sideways one. Yeah, so we'll, we, you know, you'll see that no doubt later on. Um, so uh, with that said, let's let's uh, we've got a couple of clips as mentioned, and so we're going to show you this first one of uh, us. This is the approach shot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a ride to Lahaina. So here we are. Coming into Lahaina Town, going to uh, Koholo, Kohola. Koholos. 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 We're gonna get some beer. Yeah, beer run. To the brewery. know somebody to figure this place out. It's back behind the little strip mall. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really, except for this, the grain silo right there, there's really no indication of, there's like almost no signage in this warehouse over here. Yeah, you gotta tell me you know Steve, otherwise you're not getting in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, uh, let's see, we need to get, uh, we need to get lucky on this Spot here. Uh, oh, there's a sign. Yes. Oh, there's, there's my favorite sign. Oh, brewery customers only. Well, that's well, us. Zoom on here somewhere. We're in the right place, there. Yeah, right. I think we found. I think we found it. Cheers. I think Let's we found it. Beer. Let's do it. Yeah, all right. Well, now you guys know the secret location for Kaholas. Kahala. Koholas. Koholas. And it's not Koholas. easy. To, I mean, it's, it's not. It's it doesn't not, roll off the tongue. Yeah, it but, doesn't uh, <laughs> really roll off the tongue. <laughs> not. I'm working on it. Um, but uh, a couple anyhow, more beers, it might. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> a couple more samples for sure. Never know. But uh, yeah, mention Steve's name, and uh, <laughs> you can pick up our tab. <laughs> yeah, don't mention. Don't mention my day. But I do want to mention Sierra's name, who was our bartender that day, who was fantastic. She took good care of us. She so, was great, wasn't she? Mahalo to Sierra. Yeah, she really was. Um, very knowledgeable about the beer as well. So if you get get over there and you, you see Sierra's behind the bar, you're in your good hands. Um, but let's get let's get into the beers yeah. that we bought that day. Yeah, let's yeah? see what we got. Um, so first off, uh, Talk Story Pale Ale. Oh, that's one of your big ones, huh? Yeah, that was kind of one of the first ones that put them on the map, I believe. Absolutely. This one here is a very different Pilsner. It's a it's a it's a se seasonal. Oh, which one's that? That's the. Uh, Lokahi. Lokahi. Lokahi right. Pilsner. Really, really nice. So again, uh, at least three out of these four are, are available year round. And this one's the Red red Sand Amber Ale, mm -hmm. which for me was a little disappointing because I thought, you know, by the name Red Sand, I thought it was going to be a red ale, but actually it's an amber. Gotcha. It's, it's good though. I like, I, I like the taste of it. I, I like it a lot. This one here is the Lahaina Hazy. Uh, IPA. Oh, 
right. So this one here. It's right up your alley. Yeah. New England cool. style. Well, let's take a look and see what we ordered while we were there. Top Story Pale Ale, Red Sand Amber, uh, Baby Peach Blonde, and uh, Bloody Toppy. Okay, so we got uh, Talk Story. We got the Red Sand. We got the Baby Beach Lager and Kailani's IPA. All right, what you gonna start with? I'm gonna start with the Talk Story. Okay. I know that one's good. Oh, that's a that's an American um, pale ale. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like I, that one. I do too. I like the I like American pale ales in mm -hmm. general, but. A little bit of an aftertaste to it. Yeah. But the flavor was good going down. Wow, that was, uh, it's made me thirsty. The talk story and uh, the, red, the red sand amber is two of the ones that we have here today. And so we're gonna jump right in with talk story. And then we've got two additional ones that we didn't have in that flight at the brewery. Um, only because we wanted to mix it up a bit. Exactly. Let's give them a try, let's dive in there. Absolutely, cheers. Cheers. This is a talk story, American Pale Ale. Yeah, it's every bit as good as I remember. Sure is. Yeah, got a nice little hoppy finish, mm -hmm. but not over the top hoppy. No, you know, I think uh, I mentioned something about an aftertaste. So when I was there at the uh, at the brewery, yep. Um, but it's just a hoppy finish. It's it's a really good finish. Um, I don't think it's any different on the can than the than the keg, but uh, I'm 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 liking it. Yeah, me too. I'd say it's it's really similar to the keg. You know, sometimes you can you can really have a, a noticeable difference uh, between what's on tap and what's in a can or a bottle. Uh, in this case, I'd say it's pretty close. Yeah, pretty darn close. I, I think it's really consistent, straight across. Mm-hmm. But it's a nice light I, beer. It's. Yeah, it's like 5.1, I think. Is that is that correct, Eric? Yeah, talk story. Uh, uh, we got a 5.1 mm -hmm. with uh, 42 IBUs. Yeah, so very mild on the hops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good beer. This is one of their, uh, their first beers I remember having back in 2014, I think it was, when they opened. Right. Um, I believe that's right. It was either 14 or 15, and I know they started winning medals in, in 2016, so. Yeah, and uh, they've. The metal count has been growing, especially in 2019. They, they went yeah, through the roof. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we'll get into we'll get into some of that. But no, this is this is a great beer, and uh, this one's available year round. Uh, six mm -hmm. pack cans, most places. Yeah, most places on Maui. Right. I don't know that they're available outside of the state. Um, you know, it is a smaller uh, smaller brewery. It's a very independent brewery, yeah. uh, so their distribution isn't uh, you know not like. Uh, Anheuser Busch or anything like that. <laughs> um, no, know, they are they are uh, really a local Maui beer. And you could tell from probably just the drive in and the approach into the warehouse, it's like very nondiscreet, uh, mm -hmm. sort of low key kind of a place. But, but that's but, how some of the best breweries started, right? I mean, oh, they, they, who did they buy this place from? Yeah, you know? Maui Brewing Company, right? Exactly. So, so uh, after this Maui is... Brew started up at Fish and Game and. This was their first step into uh, big time, canning and kind of getting into the big time. And yep. uh, once they moved to expand to uh, Kihei, uh, we got a new brewery. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it, we, we got lucky. And uh, thankfully, they stepped in and, and picked up uh, it's basically a, already a running brewery. Uh, mm. All they had to do was you know, start making beer, which yeah. they did. So they did. love it. I would say this for an American Pale Ale, I'm, I'm gonna give this like a, a good seven and a half, eight. This yeah, is a really well balanced beer. Yeah, I like it a lot. Tasty, I like it. Did we want to do the beer light on that or? Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Boom. Boom. Look at that. Yeah, very light. Very light. <clears throat> the carbonation was good initially. I had a nice head on on the, my pour. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty clear. Yeah, very clear, very light. You know, it's somewhere around half. one and a half. Yeah. One half, and you know, for a pale ale. And that's what you want. It's fairly light for a pale ale. Mm. Some pale ales go a lot darker, like the Sierra Nevada pale ale, but. Well, exactly. But no, this is a really nice, clean, uh, clean finishing a pale, and not hoppy at all, as we mentioned. So, cheers. Cheers. Hey, I think we have another. We have another clip, yeah. Mm hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, let's see what else we tried over there at, uh, yeah. at the brew pub. Let's throw to another clip. I believe this one is uh, the... Uh, Lokahi. Lokahi. The Lokahi is the next one we're going to try here, and it actually was the next one we tried there. So check exactly. it out. We'll see you in a minute. I'm going to try the Lokahi Pilsner. We got a Waterman Lokahi, it's a kind, and a Molokai Stout. I'm going to start light with the uh, Lokahi Pilsner. Alright. Let us know how that is. Pretty smooth. Yeah, that's supposed to be yeah. German style water. Yeah, it's oh, I'm sorry, a Pilsner. I was going to say, it's, it's a lot more like a Pilsner. Yeah, it's um, German style Pilsner, they're saying. 5.5? Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel very heavy, but uh, everything we ha we've had so far has been pretty heavy, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, but it's pretty light on the IBUs. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine very hoppy at all. No, no, it's pretty light, easy drinking. Good. Yeah, good starter beer, good breakfast beer. <laughs> awesome. Cheers. Cheers. So. I'm going to start off like you with the lightest first, and this is the uh, Pilsner. Yeah, like I said, Eric, super light, um, good breakfast beer. <laughs> I, I almost no, uh, like no hoppy flavors or nothing like that. It's super light and refreshing. And, yeah, that's a good Pilsner. I can definitely taste the German kind of the German hints of uh, the hops that they, they typically use in a, in a Pilsner, German Pilsner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I would drink a pint of that for sure. Cheers. Cheers. And you may have noticed that that was actually our second flight of four beers in the video. <laughs> so we, we did a total of Eight beers, yeah, because we yeah. we did two flights, and we got we, we mixed it up a little bit. You had one different one than I did. Uh, yeah, and I think they had a total of nine different beers on on tap, uh, so yeah. we split it up and uh, we tasted almost every one. Right, each of us. I I um I did I did take a count off their beer board, and there was ten ten beers. Ten beers. Uh, so we did eight of them, not mm -hmm. too not too bad, and five of them uh, you can get in the can at the brewery. Mm -hmm. so. And of course they do growlers to go. Yep, growlers to go. They also do the crowlers. They do crowlers as well. Cool. Which is the 32 ounce can, uh, canning machine, which is great because you can get their whatever you want. You yeah, get you might be traveling and not brought a growler with you. Yeah, exactly, which I did. I forgot mine and you had yours, but yeah. So it's, it's convenient to get a 32 ounce, a little less money. That's what I was going to mention too is like when you get a flight, it's typically like if a brewery's selling a pint for six or seven dollars, then Expect to pay two or three dollars more for the flight. Oh yeah. Yeah. But anyhow, back to the uh, Lokahi. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let's hit the beer light. The beer light again. Look at that. Look at those. Yeah. Wow. The bubbles are still going on this side. Bubbles guy. are going like mad. Well, it is a pilsner, so. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. We're still looking at uh, maybe this is up to a two, two point oh. Yeah. But it's, oh yeah, that's uh, kind of a two. Yeah. Yeah, sure, it's we'll give it a it's two. It's definitely no darker than that. And uh, it's funny because, I mean, the SRMs, people don't even really talk about the SRMs. It's no. more like ABVs, IBUs. Right, the SRMs really don't do much to and change it, the taste. But, I mean, it's, uh, some some chefs will tell you that you taste with your eyes before you taste with your mouth. Very true. You know, people look at Guinness and they're like, oh, no, I'm afraid of a dark beer. And you drink it, it's like, it's, it's a light beer. Smooth as silk, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, this for is nice, though. yeah for a pilsner, I'd have to I'd have to say it's it's up there. I mean, I know this won the uh, bronze uh, medal at the Great American Beer Festival in 2016. So congrats and on that. That's some pretty heavy competition. Sure is. Yeah, I mean that that's a that's one uh, beer style that gets flooded with <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. submissions. Uh, they gotta have they gotta be up against hundreds of the best. You know. Right. So to get third place on a on a German style pilsner, that's that's really well done. Especially that's in 2016, something. what they were maybe two years old at that point. Right. That's uh, that's starting out right. Yeah. So I I got to go along with um, with that bronze medal and say this is this is close to a nine for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't generally drink pilsners, but. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, that's, uh, yeah, but true. yeah, if I do, this is this is right up there with them for sure. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. Real clean finish, like you said, and I think we both said in the in the clip, was, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it was a good breakfast beer. But <laughs> <laughs> nice clean finish. May I have another? <laughs> right. Let's keep that. Let's keep that on the down low. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, next we're moving into um, the red sand. Yeah. It's an amber ale. A little um, deceptive in the titling, huh? Well, I thought so, because I, I really like red ales. This is, mm -hmm. is very red, actually. Uh, they're calling it an amber, right. and maybe it's a little play on words with the red sand, but I it named I after like a it. red sand beach here on Maui, obviously. That's right. Uh, yep. Uh, Hana side, right? So, <laughs> I believe. Mm -hmm. Beautiful beach. And anyway, um, this is, uh, again, the red sand amber ale. Cheers. Mm. That's all right. That sure is. Not hoppy, well balanced, very clean finish. Nice, nice, nice multi flavor, mm -hmm. um, and real, real good mouth feel. It's, it's, it's got some flavor. It's got some texture. It kind of does remind me of some reds almost, uh, just being so malty. Mm -hmm. you know? What are we looking at as far as numbers here on this one? I think I got a, a five nine on the ABVs and. A, Ooh. Wow, five yeah. nine! Wow, get, getting up there in the thirty-two on the uh, IBUs. Yeah, and let's jump on uh, jump into the color because I, I think as an amber ale, this should come in around uh, probably I'm thinking at eight, six or seven, eight. Yeah, and this this one here has got a little bit more color even. Yeah. So we're looking. I mean, at this is red. It it really is kind of a red ale, even though they're saying they're calling it an amber. That's at least a seven, a solid yeah. seven. That's what I would have guessed. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, Eric. But it's, uh, it's a good tasting beer. It is. I like the multi flavor. It's not, like I said, not hoppy. It's, it's just a kind of all around great, great amber ale. So far, all these have been really smooth tasting. I mean, they just kind of, they just kind of flow. Right. You know, there's nothing really shocking to the palate about it. It's just uh, really easy sipping beer. Yeah. No, they're all good. All good so far. Yeah. And we have another clip, I think. So we've got. Uh, we do. We got a couple of. Uh, we got a special. Uh, we got a, a special clip because it's not one that we're tasting here tonight. Right. But it's one that we tasted over there at the brewery last weekend, and it's called the Waterman IPA. And uh, so yeah, let's let's take a look. So this is great. I mean, this place is, first of all, it's not busy, which is great. Um, I'm moving into the Waterman IPA, that's what they're calling this one. And it's uh, really a good looking one. Uh, it's an American style IPA. Not that hoppy, although, oh no, I take that back. This is a nice kick at the end on the hops. They're saying Simcoe hops and Summit hops on their board up there. Really good, big, bold, hoppy, hoppy uh, flavors coming through on the finish. 6.8 uh, ABV, so you know, pretty good, pretty big. In fact, all their, I find all their beers are pretty big. They don't have anything under 5.1 alcohol, and uh, and they just go up from there all the way, I think, to like almost nine. So, no, oh, this is a good, a good uh, all-around IPA, American style. Just trying to water man that myself, uh, and you're right. That is good beer. It's a little hoppy. It's got some flavor to it. It's a, but it's a good balanced beer. It tastes really well. But you know, as we mentioned before, they are getting warmer, so they're going down faster. Uh, I got to hurry up and get them down. Next one I got online here is a Dekine. Ooh, that's the double IPA. Double IPA, 7.2, 70 IBUs, or ABVs. Yep. IBUs. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's affecting me just even thinking about it. 7.2 and 70. Mm, that's a big one. Yeah, maybe a little more flavor than the water, man, but not a whole lot, not dramatically different. And that was the Waterman IPA, which is uh, one of their other uh, year-round uh, 
canned beers as well as obviously being at the brewery. I uh, really liked it. It was good. Yeah, it was really good, I thought. Yeah, no, it was great, great flavors. Um, we, we didn't uh, elect to buy that, that beer to, to taste here on the show. We, we went with their seasonal, which is this, the uh, Pilsner. Um, but it is, it's pretty easy to find. And, then, uh, and Eric, did, if you could tell us if you remember anything about the Dekine uh, yeah, double the, IPA. <laughs> the Dekine double IPA. I mean, it was, uh, you know, getting into a double IPA, you're going to think that uh, it's going to be a big, heavy beer. And uh, while the numbers would suggest that, the taste was smooth as silk. I mean, it was, it tasted almost identical in my mind to, um, uh, to the Waterman IPA. Hmm. Uh, it was, it was a really good beer. It was nice. Yeah. It was totally smooth and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Liked it a lot. Great. Well, we should move into our, uh, final, uh, beer for the night, um, mm -hmm. which is of course the, uh, Lahaina Haze. Yeah. Which I love. Into the hazies. I'm looking forward to it. A New England style IPA naturally. Yep. So we of are looking at, uh, we're getting into the bigger numbers here again. We're looking at, uh, 6.3 on the ABVs. And uh, 36 on the IBUs. Wow. But uh, yeah, looks like a hazy. Well, in fact, that 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 Waterman was big, right? Wasn't that? Yeah, the Waterman six, was six eight. I think it was six point yeah, eight. It was, it was, it was pretty or pretty heavy. Yeah. I, yeah. I, so I, maybe that's why there wasn't so much difference between that and the double overhead. Yeah. Because uh, oh, really true. Wasn't yeah. Wasn't as far as numbers go, but they, right. you couldn't really taste. You couldn't really taste the. Uh, the numbers they didn't really come out and grab you like uh, yeah. sometimes they do yeah yeah but, all right uh, well hazy. it's certainly hazy as uh, as it should be this is the lahaina hazy yeah so we're looking maybe a three two or a three on that one okay yes on the srm chart but uh more importantly mm. you know like we were talking about the uh, uh it is a 6.3 at 36 ibus and um, another year round, uh, another year round offering uh, mm -hmm. by uh, a Cahola's, Cahola Brewing. Or actually, it's it's Cahola Brewery. It's not right. a brewing company. It's Cahola Brewing. Right. Uh, br I'm sorry, brewery. Brewery. <laughs> I tell you, I, the name is it's it's cute, but it's hard to say, man. <laughs> it's just that place up there behind Subway. Yeah, <laughs> right. Look for the the sugar cane turnaround. Uh, the, you're right there. You 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 got it. Look for the two silos. Yeah, but good beer though. Yeah, fantastic beer. Yeah. I, I was looking at their website today. They do a good job. And uh, one of the things that they were mentioning, or a couple of things that they mentioned, was that uh, most of their beers are brewed with just four ingredients. Mm. If they're going to add anything else to them, it's going to be Hawaiian flavors, and it's going to be local. Uh, pineapple or citrus or coffee or some local local ingredient. Their whole idea behind their beer is to make something that you can enjoy on the beaches of Maui. Uh, in the temperature, the climate of of Hawaii, yeah. it's not. Uh, they're not looking for some something to like huddle by the fire. They're looking for something where you can just kick back on the beach, kick back at a picnic, and uh, just nice, easy, easy flowing, refreshing beers. And uh, yeah. they've hit the nail on the head with everything that I've tried. So far, yeah, so far today, even with those that other um, uh, flight that we got, the second flight, which I mm -hmm. thought was going to be a lot heavier, it really was heavier in alcohol, but uh, flavor-wise, not not that bad at no. all. Very easy to drink still. Exactly. Even though they're bigger beers, and and we do have a uh, one more clip to show you, which is um, a stout. Oh, yeah. Even we That's got right. the stout. It's a it's a, a really nice uh, Molokai stout that we're going to play that clip for you in just a moment. But uh, what do you think as far as, you know, to rate this one as a, as a hazy? Because we've done several hazy shows. You know, it... <laughs> well, every, every show ends up being a bit hazy, but you know what I mean. Some hazier than others. Beer-wise. <laughs> Beer-wise, yeah. You know, uh, I got to tell you, the hazy, uh, hazy style beer is starting to grow on me. I wasn't a big mm. fan at first, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's definitely starting to grow on me. And uh, oh, I think beers like this are, are part of that. Um, yeah, I, it's I, not over overpoweringly fruity, but there is uh, there is some, some a hint to the citrus and the pine. And yep, there are some fruit fruity mm -hmm. uh, citrusy kind of uh, notes and hints to it. I but like it, but it's not overpowering. It's it still tastes like beer. Mm hmm. Very much so. Oh, I gotta I gotta go eight on this one, man. I'm with you. 
I love it. I, I really, I think this is this is a really good example of a, of a New England style hazy, like some of the other great ones that we've tried in other shows. Right. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend it. It's an eight for me. Um, yeah, it's l low on the uh, IB on the uh, on the IBUs. Yeah, yeah IBUs 30 about thirty something, thirty two or yeah. something. Which yeah. is yeah. So that's right, right where you want to be, I think, for for a beer yeah, like this. A little bit of a little bit of character, but uh, yeah. it's not overpowering. Yeah. No, I give this a solid eight, man. I'm with you. All right. Well, that with that said, we've got one more bonus clip, bonus tasting clip <laughs> for you <laughs> tonight. It's the uh, stout, Molokai stout. And so, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's roll that, uh, roll that clip. <laughs> Got one left. Oh, well, it kind of sound. Not a, not a Guinness, but it's worth trying. So, uh, last but not least, this is the Molokai Stout. Um, which Eric just tried, but uh, here we go. This is uh, looking good. This is 6.9, so it's a big beer. Oh wow, it's got yeah, it's got a lot of malt in it, a lot of multi flavors. Um, I'd be using only 30, so it's not not extremely hoppy. I'd say there's like a lot of chocolate malt in there. For the most part, chocolate malt and um, yeah, just a really dark. Dark malt. That's what that's what's coming through to me anyway. Just right off the bat. Of course, I've had a couple of lots of other different different flavors in my in my palate already, but I'm glad I'm finishing on this one. This is really good. This might, be, might be one of my faves all day. Oh yeah, that Molokai out. That was that was a good one. I mean, like I said, it's not quite a Guinness, but it uh, what is. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> good point. <laughs> but uh, no, that said, I mean, it is. I I think it's as good of a sound as you're going to find out there. I loved it. I tell you that the as I mentioned in the clip, uh, the dark the dark chocolate malty flavors were great. Um, they're you know, like a Guinness. It's very smooth on the finish. It's not hoppy. Mm -hmm. Man, I just love that. You know, the only thing, of course, with the Guinness is a lot of times it's on the nitro, so you're getting it sure. a lot more. It's a, a thicker, little more velvety yeah. kind of. Right, right, right. Uh, but I mean, the, all the flavors were there: the chocolate, but, the coffee, the. Yep, exactly. As a basic, as your basic kind of like stout that's brewed in a traditional way that doesn't have this, you know, nitro business uh, mm -hmm. built in, the technology built into it. Uh, so you get that draft, that true draft uh, flavor. This was a great beer. And, yeah, it's not canned yet, but I could see it being canned soon. I'm hoping it is. Yeah, no I, kidding. I could really use some of that. Yeah. But and with, uh, yeah. I was gonna say overall, I, you know, I'm very impressed with uh, with everything we've tried there. Oh yeah, Koholas, man, uh, it's a great brewery. I would uh, check it out if you can. And next time you're in Lahaina, yeah. for sure. And you're thirsty. They do have a happy hour from four to six. They're open from uh, two p.m. until nine p.m. I believe every day. Place is great. We had a great time. Mahalo's to uh, the Sierra. brewery. Yeah, and Sierra for sure. She knew her stuff. Uh, she did, and it was a we were really, really good experience for, for us. Uh, enjoyed it tremendously. So hope you uh, also enjoyed our show tonight, and we'll see you next time. I'm Steve B. In the Sarek T. Aloha. Have a good night. Have a good night, and cheers. Thanks for watching the beer show. Aloha. Cheers. Two, three, four. When I'm lonely. I drink a fancy beer. fancy beer, oh, when I want you only, I drink a fancy beer.